always pick us up online at willag.org and then just play us directly through your radio anytime you'd like when you have time to listen to the whole program. I'm Illinois Extension's Todd Gleason. If you're in the mood for some sprucing up, you're in luck. From big to small or farm to front yard, your Illinois Farm Bureau member discount from John Deere is ready and waiting to help. It's easy to think green when it's the rewards loyalty program with savings on equipment, special parts, and home and workshop products. Whether your tasks involve mowing, planting, or cleaning, you'll be set for whatever your work requires. All you need to do is sign up, have your membership number handy, and go to johndeere.com slash farm bureau. RFD Radio Network's Rita Frazier connects rural routes for you. Rita delivers passion and reliable information to listeners on the RFD Radio Network. Her radio career spans close to three decades. Here's a bit about her rural roots. I grew up on a small farm. My job today allows me to connect with people from all walks of life and experience opportunity every day. I get to talk about what I love, farming. Be it routes or roots, RFD Radio, FarmWeekNow.com, and FarmWeek keep you connected. You're listening to RFD Town and Country Partners, connecting you with the food you eat, the Illinois farmers who grow it, and the food-related events destinations, and lifestyles that make our state great. Welcome to RFD Town & Country Partners. On a Tuesday, I'm DeLos Yonke. Joining us in studio, a regular guest, Joe Berman at Country Financial. He is the manager of financial planning support. How are you? I am excellent, DeLos. How are you this afternoon? <laughs> Doing all right. Glad to have you in. Uh, the week after the diplomas were passed about in Colleges Locally and universities here. all over the place. Uh, yes, I said May is certainly the month for graduations. Uh, also, kind of coincidentally, along with Cinco de Mayo and Derby Month, mm-hmm. May uh, May 29th is uh, National 529 Plan. 529. 5, 529. So college funding goes right hand in hand, and certainly, like a lot of the campuses the last few weeks, have had their college graduations. And as those seniors walked across the stage, got handed that diploma. Hopefully, mom and dad are hoping, yeah, and uh, that it's all good. The grades were good. It's a note saying you still have two parking tickets. You need to two two parking tickets. But, but other than that, hopefully there's a diploma in there. The, yeah, hope I say uh, we're all hoping that there's a diploma. But along with that, normally comes a hefty bill, and yeah. so now now the debt comes home to roost here. Well, being the man of means that I am, even I from the beginning, like from birth, started accounts, and I know they won't eventually make it to much just with that monthly contribution but it was one i still remember the question can we afford to do this that we can we can't afford not to exactly i mean the cost of doing nothing is even more than than just setting aside some some small amount so the 529 plans are a great way to save for college uh funds they don't receive a federal income tax deduction but they grow tax deferred if used for college or educational expenses tax-free on the backside coming out. But uh, we were just talking before about retirement planning, college planning. One of the interesting things about college planning that uh, many of us don't don't think about is, you know, with retirement planning, you know, for many of us, hope, hopefully we've got 30, 40 years to save up, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully 20, 30 years on the backside to have some money coming out. But for college, we're probably saving at most maybe 18 years if we start right when junior sure. or juniorette was born and and mom and, as mom and dad we're all hoping at most four four years to distribute and those a lot of those are pretty conservative i would think too i mean you're not going to gain 20 percent year on end no, on a college type fund. no because yeah you don't want to be sort of a hundred percent in equities mm-hmm. and uh you know suddenly your junior year of college the com- or your junior year of high school you're going to be having a conversation with your kid uh hey, it's looking more like Heartland rather than Harvard right here because the account you know your 529 plan looks like a 357 or something mhm i'd send him to Heartland anyway but <laughs> if you've given it the choice or something yep. like that but but yes uh, the point is is certainly made there so one question about that then talking about retirement because mm-hmm. how could i turn down the opportunity for the company match 
But a corporate match, so yeah. that looks attractive. But if I'm way into retirement, but I'm not yet even thinking about college, how do I so, how do I balance? So those two? that is a that is always the sixty four thousand or maybe the two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollar question now when it comes to college is how do you balance retirement and and college? And a lot of the advice that we give our our clients day in and day out is um, save for retirement first. First and foremost, mom and dad should be in a good spot. And as you already mentioned, like the 401k match, don't overlook free free money from the employer. Always take advantage of that full employer match. Um, but save save early, save often for retirement. For college, there's there's lots of different ways to lower those costs of attendance. Whether it's we talked about Heartland, looking at a, a community college mm-hmm. for for a couple of years first transferring in, going to cheaper schools, you know, maybe living with mom and dad and, and taking off some of the room and board costs if there's a local college nearby, uh, making smart decisions on which uh, schools you go to, maybe even considering military scholarships, grants. At the worst case, loans, yeah. right? At, at the worst case, you got to borrow money, and, and I'm going to highly encourage you to get a degree that's going to be valued in, in the industry there and mm-hmm. is going to give you sort of the rate of return that's going to make that college education worth it. Um, you know, but the worst case is you have to borrow it for it. But the last I checked uh, over at my local financial institution in the lobby there in the rate schedule, there were no retirement loan rates there. I couldn't <laughs> borrow money for retirement. Uh, or, you know, if Junior is going to get a great job, then Mom and Dad need to let them know, hey, we're moving in with right. you afterwards. Yeah, we're going to do sort of the reverse move in as opposed to you moving back home. We're moving in with you now. Hey, that's all right. Also, okay, I have student debt. Yeah. And I have credit card debt. Yes. Now, so, so here's one of the questions, because the student debt is probably at a much lesser rate than the credit card debt. So does that necessarily mean... I yep. move it. Yeah, so that that is an interesting thing. So a couple things we've seen here lately. Federal Reserve reported some numbers here. Overall household debt, so mortgages, student loans, credit cards, have hit a new high, $13.5 trillion, that's with a T, uh, nationwide. nationwide at the end of 2018. Credit uh-huh. card balances have once again returned to their 2008 peak, uh, which is around seven thousand dollars per individual, about fifteen thousand for a couple of outstanding credit card debt that that we're carrying in our wallets each and every twenty nine percent at twenty nine percent double digit rates. So uh, you know the the other thing that's very interesting we've seen a a new kind of debt that really was not around ten years ago. That's come into this. Certainly the the rise of student debt is sort of on top of the credit card debt. But the other type, and we're seeing the solicitations, we're all seeing these in the mail each week, is the are those personal loan hmm. uh, notes where uh, maybe you're using that to go and consolidate your credit cards uh, at a fixed rate. And maybe that can be a great plan for you. But But if you don't break the behavior... If you don't cut up the cards or put them in the freezer or something like that, put them on hold. If you pull them back out again and start using them, well, now you you just you're right back in the same boat again. Right. So now you have two payments off the same card. Yeah, and that's an off the same debt. Yeah. Now you now you have a second and a third loan. Yeah. I mean, if you have the house, you might. I mean, you've got you just have more debt. Right. And and we're seeing the average uh, students coming out of college here uh, with right right around thirty thousand dollars in uh, student loan debt. Okay. And we've seen that impact some of our financial security index numbers uh, back at the end of last year had, had shown that the millennials were, were putting off home ownership because well, they were saddled with some of that. I was just going to ask, then, if credit card debt is so high and if student loan debt is so high, wouldn't that eventually make us worry about the housing market? It very well could. And, and we're starting to see where some folks are putting off home ownership a little bit further because either they're strapped with that or just some of some changing demographics. Uh, what what uh, you or I or others in a same era might have said, hey, at, at you know, 22, 25 years old, we're ready to settle down and, ha- and start a family and have a house. Some of our students today are, you know, hey, I'm, I'm still enjoying life well into right. my 30s. I want to be mobile and, and live in a large community where maybe I'm not uh, – looking at home ownership right away. Well, I'm thinking, I hear Grandpa in my head, you know, this is mm-hmm. your job and this is where you're going to work for the rest of your life. 
And here's your today, pocket watch when you're done. Yeah, yeah. But, but today, not necessarily. So if I want to go from here to wherever, I don't, why would I, I want to have a mortgage? I don't want to have a mortgage. Now, and the other interesting sort of thing, and I'll, I'll kind of speak to my uh, daughters here soon, right now, 20, mm-hmm. 25 and 23, uh, but you back up 10, 11 years ago, kind of that highly Im- impressionable age, going through the mortgage housing crisis of 2008, 2009, I, we had that conversation here of, you know, in, the, in, a, in a truck back and forth to the to the barn where my daughter rode horses of, you know, Dad, are we going to lose the house or anything? I was like, no, no, that's mm-hmm. not that's not here. That's out in you know California or or, right. or, or different areas of the of the country. Uh, about a minute here, but th- just the thoughts. Also, you said that lending is a last resort when it comes mm-hmm. to, to student loans. So if my home mortgage is hopefully significantly less than. Six point nine percent, for example, for student yeah. loan process, is that a is that a that's viable an option? source that a, yeah, to, to pay for college? So, in the old days, it used to be with some of the tax changes that came through um, just last year. That was really targeted. That some of the home equity lines really had to be for home improvement, not necessarily for credit card payoff or for college. So, you know, if you are stuck with some with some loans or some Lots of good different strategies there to pay that off, whether you're going to target the highest rates first, target the highest balances. Uh, there are some behavioral things in there of really just getting some rewards early on and kind of chipping away, taking those simple steps and, and, and save, you know, scrimping up a few bucks each week to knock at the principal mm-hmm. there. My country financial agent may or may not have those answers, but if he doesn't have those answers, he knows people like you he who can reach, do. He can reach out and... and Touch in and uh, touch, touch base with us. You can also go out to uh, countryfinancial.com on the news section and see a lot of great articles written by me and others in our area. You can also follow us on Twitter at Hello Country. Hello Country. Simple as that. Thank you, sir. All right. Always good to lost. That's right. So two weeks from tomorrow is 529 Day. 529 Day thinking about uh, college preparation. Joe Berman on RFD, Town & Country Partners. Hi, this is Sabrina Hardy, RFD Business Manager. I want to thank you for listening to the RFD Radio Network, the number one ag radio network in Illinois. Did you know RFD Radio Network's programming is being broadcast by Rita Frazier and Delosh Yonke with a combined 50 years of broadcasting experience? Join us daily. If you have any questions, email me at chardy at ilfb.org. As you prepare for planting season, remember your neighbors. Whether you're an applicator, grower, or beekeeper, use FieldWatch to register your farm and monitor for sensitive sites around you. FieldWatch is a free, easy-to-use online mapping tool. Consulting FieldWatch is now a requirement for the -the over-the-top use Dicamba products. Communicating with your neighbors will help you protect your farm and the environment. Don't wait. Go online to FieldWatch.com. Growing agriculture. We grow best together. With what happens on the farm can impact your family and is related to food, I'm Mike Orso with RFT Town & Country Partners. Illinois is a big, long state, but there are other states bigger, wider, and longer. And as we recently found out, most that farm there face challenges similar and very different to what some Illinois farmers face. Let's take similar and Minnesota. If you think we've experienced some tough weather this year, Kristen Harner with the Minnesota Farm Bureau says weather there has already added to a considerable amount of stress among farmers struggling with low prices for their products. It is real. The stress level and anxiety is very high, and how people are able to move forward is different than it was, say, in the 80s. Harner had a leadership program classmate whose husband farmed and ended his life two years ago. With help, she picked up the pieces, an example Harner says of resiliency throughout rural America. After she had her farm sale, uh, after her husband um, ended his life, she was able to go into business and actually continue the farm in business in a different way with her two neighbors. While Illinois has been losing population, Gene Hall with the Texas Farm Bureau says it's the exact opposite there. 
With new people come new challenges for Texas farmers and ranchers. There are a thousand people a day moving to Texas, so we're being influenced with what happens in other parts of the country. The, I think the market is what's going to decide everything. That's everything such as how and where food is raised. If a heavily regulated industry like livestock farming checks all the boxes and complies with the law and meets all of the environmental regulations, then we're going to have to figure out a, a way to work together because those kinds of things must be done somewhere. If you think deer and other wildlife savage your gardens, yard plants, and fields, Rebecca Colnar with the Montana Farm Bureau says try dealing with grizzly bears. Having these grizzly bears is like having a street gang living next to you because it can be really scary and really dangerous. Montana is as wide or wider as Illinois is long. Sprinkled among privately owned land, farmed and ranched, is millions of acres of public land, which also pose challenges when some new residents, visitors and hunters, don't respect boundaries. Most farmers and ranchers will let you on their land, but you need to show respect and you need to ask. That's the big thing. Just ask and you'll probably get the okay. Some similarities and differences from folks in other parts of the country that also help keep the wide variety of food on our plates. For RFD Town & Country Partners, I'm Mike Orso. Spring is here and things are buzzing. Farmers and pollinators are working together to help feed us. In fact, one out of every three bites of food we eat exists because of bees, butterflies, birds, bats, and other insects. Pollinators are important to our food system and the ecosystem overall. That's why farmers and those in the agricultural industry are working together to protect pollinators through education, research, and conservation efforts. Visit ILAGformonarchs.org to join the buzz. That's ILAGformonarchs.org. Farm Week and Partners Magazine editor Chris Anderson connects rural routes for you. Chris shares her four decades of writing expertise by making sure each edition delivers the best information. Here's a bit about her rural roots. I was raised on a farm in Champaign County growing corn, soybeans, popcorn, pumpkins, and poultry. My top priority is to inform, educate, and even entertain Farm Bureau members. Be it routes or roots, RFD Radio, FarmWeekNow.com, and FarmWeek keep you connected. Welcome back to RFD Town and Country Partners. On a Tuesday, I'm DeLos Yonke. Go out to Quincy now. The 19th annual Bridge the Gap to Health race will be taking place. Sarah, is it Reschel? Reschel, yep. At the Quincy Medical Group. Sarah Reschel, thanks for joining us. Well, my first question, we've got a race. We've got bridge in here. Are there bridges involved uh, with these races coming up? There are. So we have two bridges that span um, the Mississippi River that connect Quincy to Missouri. And so our runners will take one bridge across and take the other bridge to come back over back into Quincy. So we have a 5K, a 10K, and a half marathon. Um, and generally we have about 1,500 to 1,800 people every year. Now, while you were planning all of this, surely one of the questions was going to be, can we even cross either bridge in the first place to have this event, but hopefully that's getting better. It is, yeah. We actually didn't get the go-ahead from IDOT until last Friday afternoon that we would be able to use one of the bridges um, because it's so low on one side, it gets flooded out pretty easily. So um, there were lots of dry dances and anti-rain dances going on over <laughs> here, hoping that those those river levels would continue to go down, and they did. Okay. Well, yeah, that is that is something that you don't want to have to plan for, but uh, every, every once in a while, that's it's probably not the first time in 19 years where that's been part of the plan. You know, this was the closest that we had ever actually come to um, having to relocate the race. We had our plans ready to go, um, you know, but it, it's not really bridge the gap when you don't have a bridge. So luckily it all seems to be working out. Gotcha. How many people, because, you know, I can 5K uh, fun walk with the best of them, but how many people typically would participate in a half marathon? We have um, upwards of about 200 people every year who come and do the half marathon. Um, it's a, for those of, of your listeners who are runners, it's a little bit of a difficult half marathon. We've got quite a few hills in there um, being right there on the bluff of the river, but mm -hmm. um, it's a challenging course. It's a beautiful course. Um, so if there's anybody who's just sitting around thinking, I want to run a half marathon this weekend, come on over. You can still do it. Yeah. What uh, what kind of costs are associated? Um, our half marathon is $70, 
and then um, we have the 10K, which comes in at 60, and then we have two versions of the 5K. There's a leisure walk, which is a little less expensive um, at 35, and then there's the competitive 5K, which is 40. Now, are you just running to, I assume you cross the Bayview Bridge first? Yes, and okay. then come back on the memorial. Do you just go straight west and come back straight east again, or is it a little different than that? Um, well, it, it depends on which route you're on. Um, all runners do, like every race, that's the first thing they do. They cross, they head west, and then they come back at the first turnaround in Missouri and head back east. And then from there, they kind of divide depending on which route. Um, our 5K gets back down to the riverfront fairly quickly because they get about two miles on those bridges. Um, and it's only a 3.1-mile race. Um, but then the half marathon and the 10K both get to go out historic Main Street oh. um, for quite a ways. And then um, our half marathon actually goes through a couple of um, our most beautiful parks here in Quincy. So, nice. again, very scenic route. Well, I was going to say because uh, it seems like, well, you go west a ways, you turn around, come east a ways. That seems easy enough. But then you realize just what kind of terrain you actually have to cross by doing that. Yeah. We start right down on the riverfront, so to get up to the bridge is about four blocks uphill, and it's um, not a not a slow incline. I'll say that. <laughs> now, is is Bicentennial Park is that open? Is that available? Yes, it is. We okay. have a little bit of um, flooding right there on the edge, um, but we think that by Saturday, that last remaining bit is going to be um, out from under the water. Might be a little slushy, so we won't be sending people close to that, but okay. everything else will be good. But I was just commenting to someone today, it's a really beautiful area if, in fact, you could get to it. So yes. hopefully and people you can. can get to yes. it. Okay. So they may need to park somewhere in downtown, but then they can make their way to the park. Yeah, and we have on our website, bridgethegaptohealth.com, um, all sorts of maps that show where public parking is. Um, we've added a shuttle service this year, so it has information about where you can park and where the shuttle will pick you up and drop you off. Because um, we found a lot of people after running don't really want to turn around and walk back up that four block <laughs> hill. So we're hoping that the shuttle will be very popular for folks this year. Yeah, just the Memorial Bridge itself, that last half mile or so, that could that's daunting in itself. Yes, it wow. is. Wow, how about that? Uh, tell us about Quincy Medical Group as well. Yeah, so Quincy Medical Group, we are a multi-specialty um, clinic here in Quincy, and I actually am with the Quincy Medical Group Healthcare Foundation, which mm. is our nonprofit arm. Um, and so Bridge the Gap is one of the events that we host every year as a fundraiser. And this particular fundraiser uh, goes to the Quincy Catholic Charities Medicist Program. Um, it's a program that's designed to help individuals who are struggling to make ends meet and purchase their life-saving medications. Um, we don't want patients or anyone in this community having to choose whether they're going to eat dinner or they're going to purchase their medication. Sure. So um, it's a great program here in our, our community. Because of our 19 years with Bridge the Gap, um, we've been able to help individuals secure over $18 million worth of prescription drugs. Um, and so it's uh, definitely having a pretty substantial impact on our community. Wow, fantastic. So you mentioned the website, bridgethegap2health.com. Yes. Uh, I can show up that day and participate? You can. We have registration that morning starting at 6.30. Um, all races start at 8 a.m. So registration ends about 10 till 8. Okay. Wow. Okay. I assume you send them out in some sort of groupings, but, we but do. It all, it, it, everything starts early. Yep. The um, the gun goes off at 8. We, we kind of let small groups go at a time just so that we're not getting into big, you know, clumps on the bridges. So. <laughs> But, yeah, we we tell everybody, be at the start line ready to go at 8. Yeah, you don't need a traffic jam on the bridge. Uh, right. that's, that's no way to go. Yeah. Right. Well, glad that the river's down and glad you're able to do this. should be nice and warm as well. So hopefully yeah. it'll be a great day on Saturday. Yeah, thank you so much. Sarah Rochelle and uh, Sarah Rochelle at uh, Quincy Medical Group and their foundation, bridgethegaptohealth.com.